Hello, 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 hello. What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Self Tape Mastery. I'm Christine Horn, professional actress and life and career coach for actors just like you. Oh, man. Welcome back. Yesterday was a great jump off. If you missed yesterday, if you missed part one, please go back and watch part one. I am live on Crowdcast, so I'm not seeing any comments on Facebook, even though you may be watching me on Facebook. I will check those comments later, but thank you for watching. To all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up, replay watchers? Y'all, part one was great. So all this week, we are working on what I call some of the biggest mistakes that I see uh, in self-tapes from my clients when I'm working with them. Um, there are many, but I'm focusing this week on five and they're in no particular orders, which is the worst, or which is the best. So thank you all for watching. Did you find yesterday helpful? Yesterday we talked about not reading stage directions. Hi, Marky. Hi, Dawn. Thank you for popping on. And I know more of you are here live on Facebook. Y'all, yesterday was what I call a marathon day where like every single hour was accounted for. Oh my gosh. We went to go see, um, there's a new movie coming out on Netflix this week, tomorrow. Um, it's called Triple Frontier with Ben Affleck, Charlie Hunnam. And we got to see a screening of it yesterday. I opened the film. So we got to see it yesterday. It was dope. So look at, look out for that on Netflix and it's in theaters too. But needless to say, like I feel like Barry White right now because I haven't even had my morning tea yet. But um, what I want to get into today, hey, Roxanne, is um, something that's uh, a sticky subject for some, and what, but it's not for me. And it's one of my most fun parts, but I know it can be nerve wracking to to adults and especially to my parents. I have, I coach some parents to coach their kids. And that's always a big uh, thing. Like Christine, the whole dressing the part. So that's the part two is about today, dressing the part for these auditions. And so again, please know when I say self tape, I don't just, ooh, shade, I didn't hit my timer. Y'all know, I can't even, hold on. I'm being so proud, I'm so proud of myself. This is part of the new Christine. Staying on time. So there we go. So 18 minutes. There we go. Bang. So I just want to kind of go through some general like things that should be in your closet. And I know I'm not a dude, so I can't speak totally on that. I don't have it to show you, but I can speak on it a little bit for you. So, you know, it's a touch. I say it's a touchy subject because, you know, casting will tell you. I see it more in the Southeast. I don't see it so much out here in LA, but I know in the Southeast, they were like, please do not dress in costume. And they'll say that, don't dress in costume. And I totally agree. However, <laughs> however, you should allude as much as possible to what it is that they are suggesting, right? So if you're going in for a doctor, now things are a little different in LA. In LA, honey, we kind of full out. So when there's a doctor role, expect to see a waiting room full of lab coats. That's how it is out here. So you don't feel weird. Commercials or film and TV. So yeah, you know, I have my lab coat. I have my scrubs. Oops. I have my scrubs, right? So, you know, <laughs> if you don't want to wear a lab coat, if it's like, oh, I feel like I'm doing too much, even though I would personally wear one and I still do, what you could do is what? Wear a white shirt, right? It's not a lab coat, but I'm giving you the vibe. Something, there's a mental connection when you, we see people in white, if we go to a, uh, that's why people have that, I forget what you call it. I think my husband experiences that. When you see people in the lab, just see doctors, it automatically freaks you out. So you putting on something white, it could be a white blazer or a bu white button down shirt. It still gives the same vibe, right? Hi, Wendy, I see you, welcome. Um, but I always wear scrubs. So even if, but be aware what you're auditioning for. If you're auditioning for nurse, orderly, 
versus, you know, a surgeon, depending on the show. Like, so that's your job to do some research if the show already exists. I remember in when we used the example from yesterday's script uh, from Complications, that pilot I was in, I remember going to the audition with this scrub top, it's inside out, but I had on jean bottoms. So it was like, I was, I was half committed. <laughs> I mean, I was fully committed to the audition, but I was, I didn't want to be like, I'm in costume. So to me, costume would have been top and bottom. I'm like, I'm not in costume, it's just a top. I just happened to choose this nurse top, this scrub top. So I, I'm jokingly saying this, but I do believe no matter who you are, except, except for my kids, you should have some scrubs in your arsenal. This is just a good generic color because this I've worn for doctor surgeons, but I've also worn it for nurses. But you know, if you're a pediatric nurse or something like that, then you might want to get one with the little teddy bears or something on it. You know what I mean? Just really allude to it. Another thing you should have in your arsenal. Well, let me, before I keep going down my arsenal list, let me just say this. And this is why I'm, the reason why I'm even bringing this up today. Sometimes some of you get auditions and, you know, yesterday we talked about reading the stage directions, right? But you also have to really pay attention to the breakdown of the character. So when I say breakdown, of course, for my Nubians, that just means the, uh, it's breaking down the characteristics of this person you're supposed to play by using adjectives to help you put together an image of what this character should be. But you also have to pay attention to the tone of the show. Okay, I'm, I'm not talking about that this week. Pay attention to the tone of the show. So if you know you're auditioning for The Walking Dead or some uh, apocalyptic end of the world show, any end of the world show wears the same, has the same colors. Is this kind of must, is kind of army green, end of the world got holes in the pants or black, dusty black, like you done laid on the dust and just rolled rolled around. Like that's what you wear for anything apocalyptic, <laughs> anything where the, we've got to fend for ourselves. I bet if any of y'all had an audition for, what's that, Bird Box, you would wear something like this, right? Something with the, it just speaks to end of the world. <laughs> the end is near. And of course, when you don't pay attention to these details of the tone of the show, what the show looks and feels like. If you pop up in that Walking Dead audition or some apocalyptic show with like with purple on or you know bright green or yellow, it's like you're not even fitting the vibe of what's happening here. So that's why that's very, very crucial. So all of us, and including my children, need to have these standard muted tones, end of the world is coming, right? And also for us as we get older, for when we have, I have, this, these kind of colors in short sleeves, long sleeves. If you're ever auditioning for anything uh, military based, right? You're gonna need to have this. And ladies, anytime these shows are around, just remember television is elevated, especially even my even even my mature ladies. They want to see a little poom pa pa, right? So even if you have end of the world, like make sure the shirt is fitted. And if you're self-taping at home, you can get you some binder clips to make sure your shirt is fitted. It's still Hollywood, right? It's still about, it's still about this. <laughs> um, another standard I think we should all have, especially my adults, is some kind of some kind of security guard cop, generic cop security guard, uh, military something or other. So something, you can go to the Goodwill, Salvation Army. You can find these anywhere. I think I got this one. This is one of my three. This one's a little bit baggier because it's short sleeve. I have a long sleeve. But anything that has these little, little things here just automatically gives you authoritative. So this is not, this is not a, a costume, right? It just so happens to be a shirt that just so happens to put you in the mood, in the mindset of someone who is carrying a gun or at least a nightstick, right? So this is the kind of stuff you wear. And do you see how I'm saying it's not a costume per se? I'm not telling you. Y'all ain't going to lie on me and say Christine told me to show up with my cop uniform. No, no, I did not. But I, if, I had a, if I had an audition for a cop, which I do often, this, it would be this. And guess what's on the bottom? Some black slacks, nice belt, right? And then the rest is up to you. You know, how you how you walk in the room. You know what I mean? With your hands on your hip. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have the whole shebang going. You got to still create that character. So this is another thing that needs to be in your arsenal. 
And I say this because sometimes my clients get flustered, right? They pray for an audition or auditions. They finally come through. Sorry, looking at looking at my email. Well, finally come through, and then they're scrambling on what to wear. These things are just standard. It's television. These roles come back all the time. Like it's like nothing new under the sun, right? Another thing I think we should all have speaking, you know, keeping in mind a lot of times television works in muted tones. When I say muted tones, I just mean these browns and forest greens and tans. I love to use these kind of brown, dull, drab colors for any time you have like government work, like you the government, you the social worker, right? Maybe the therapist, uh, the school teacher nobody likes. <laughs> Because nothing of it's not exciting, right? This speaks, this sounds, makes me feel like a woman. I remember years ago, I had a day job, a temp job at this pest control company in Atlanta. And this lady, I never forget, she was like, I've been here 26 years. I'm not going to quit now. What else am I going to do with my life? And she hated her job. And that's what, when I think of, <laughs> I just always think of her when I look at this brown. So whenever I have that kind of drive, and this goes for anybody. Anything that's kind of blah, the characters, uh, think of uh, colors, you know? I think we all radiate colors, right? So y'all picking up what I'm putting down, making sense? I know Facebook, I can't see you, but I feel like y'all feel me. Something that should be in all of our, all of our uh, arsenals as well is just a standard black blazer. This, I have many, this is just one, uh, basically a suit, especially for my guys. Y'all always need a full on suit and, you know, take the time, invest the money to get at least one to two suits tailored so that it fits you and you look like a million bucks. Because if you're playing a character, let's say you get an audition for that show Suits. Shout out to Day Bird who made my earrings. <laughs> let's say you get an audition for, you know, a show like Suits or something where you're just supposed to have swag and be like crisp. You want to make sure you're not in an oversized suit that you just that looks like you just got it off the rack. Even if you have to get it off the rack, just get it tailored to you so it fits you. And that goes for, for us too, ladies. When we look like a million bucks, that's what we're going to give off, especially if that character is supposed to have it all put together, right? So I have certain outfits that just really look um, really polished, right? How are we on time? We're doing good. We got eight minutes. Um, another thing, you know, always have, and please, <laughs> hey, Brian. I always say have your, what I call your down and out clothes, like not homeless, but just you ain't making bank. You're maybe kind of struggling, right? Some of you saw me on SWAT last week. And I remember when I saw the, the breakdown for the role of this mom, it didn't say that she was, you know, you know, down and out struggling. She was just, you know, single mom and, you know, not making all the best choices, but, you know, she had a job, she had her own place, that kind of thing. But so I didn't want to make her like polished. Like she, I wouldn't have popped up there with this because it felt too preppy, like somebody's school mom, or I was like, nah, there's a heaviness to her. So I tried to find a really tattered old jean jacket. And if you can see this, like it's not crisp denim, it's just kind of old. It's not like maybe he's got a little stain on the jacket. And I booked it. And when, if you happen to see the episode, they dressed me in a denim jacket. Basically, it was the same outfit I had on for my audition. And you'll find that that happens. The closer you pay attention when you're in the, when you book something and you're in the costume uh, trailer and they're tying on all these clothes on you, pay attention to the colors they're putting in you, putting you in. Pay attention to all the options that they brought in that maybe didn't get picked, but that like, huh. I'm always like, oh, what pair, what kind of, oh, that's Calvin Klein. Oh, those fit me good. Like, I just make a note. Oh, I need to go to Nordstrom Rack and get that. Oh, okay. Start shopping, not just for you hanging out with your family or going to church. You know, if it's, I don't care if it's $10 a month, $20 a month, be getting clothes for your auditions, for your, for that stuff. So they become go-tos. When I have any kind of thing, FBI agent, any kind of, professional. I don't have to stress about where's my suit jacket. I told you, I keep all my costumes here in my office. So they're not even intertwined with my regular clothes because to me, they are costumes. So that's why I wanted to touch on that word because I know you'll see that. And when you get auditions, don't be in costume. But to me, these are costumes. 
it's just not when I when I think costume, I think of like period pieces. I think of gowns, right? Um, you know, if you're a patient in a hospital, don't show up. You're not going to show up with the uh, <laughs> with a patient gown on. But I booked several things where I, you know, when I did the good audition for the Good Doctor, I just had this dress that was white. The dress was white and had little flowers, and it made me think of being a patient. So it's just alluding alluding to it. So you're going to save my, uh, um, for all of us, we're going to save the bright colors, ladies, guys, save the bright colors for when it's a comedy, right? Or if your role is more lighthearted, right? Maybe you're the comic relief. Maybe you're um, a fun teacher. You know, maybe you have an audition for something on Disney, right? But you're not going to be wearing these bright pinks or my guys, some bright blues and bright greens if you're auditioning for the blind spot or the blacklist. Like that just shows you're not paying attention to the tone of the show. So when you watch TV now, don't watch television as just a spectator. Really pay attention to what these people are wearing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Just put some rims on it, make it yours. Look, look, at, look for people who look like you, look for roles you think you could play and just pay attention to what they have on. I'm always taking pictures of the television. I'm like, oh, that's cute. And the next time I go to Nordstrom Rack or wherever, or thrift store, don't matter. I'm like, oh, I want to recreate that look. Because that's what Hollywood thinks this detective should look like. That's what Hollywood thinks this kind of uh, character looks like. Does that make sense? I hope you found this helpful. Start to look in your closet and see, do you have these standard items? You're going to need them. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but you will. Okay, uh, so listen, I'm four, I'm four minutes. I'm done early. What? Uh, be sure you tune in tomorrow. We're going to be talking about, um, I'm not going to tell you. I need y'all to make sure y'all come back. <laughs> listen, I have, I have three minutes left. Any, anybody here in uh, Crowdcast have a comment? Uh, you're welcome, uh, Marky. Um, I'm going to go over to Facebook since I have a few more minutes. I'm very proud of myself that I'm done early. Listen, if you found this stuff helpful, found these tips helpful, and you've been looking for a way to work together, be sure to click the links you find above or below or around about my inner circle. I know it's not for everybody, but for those of you who um, are looking to take some of the work with me further, you can certainly learn more there and apply there. Um, I'm coming over to Facebook just to see if anybody is on. If my Facebook wants to cooperate, let's see. I'm coming Facebook. It would. I should have just opened a Facebook browser ahead of time. That would have been more efficient. I'm like shocked. I have time left. Come back over here to Crowdcast. Check on y'all. Oh no, you're, no problem, Wendy. Um, Brian says thanks for the tip. I will do exactly that. You're welcome, Marky. You're welcome, Wendy. I'm glad y'all checked in. Facebook, hang on. If you're there, I just want to see if you have any comments or questions. I mean, every now and then I have to buy new clothes for a roll. Okay, hang on. Okay, I'm on Facebook now. I see some comments. Michael Henry says, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just put some rims on it. Yes, sir. Hey, Michael. Um, Kenya Brown says, what about theater auditions? Um, let me come back to that. Amir, um, is this first? So excited to hear this. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, you, you'll, you'll have plenty to watch. I'll touch on theater auditions really quick before I wrap. And just full transparency, though, my background's in theater. That's I don't, When I'm teaching, when I'm doing my live streams, I'm rarely ever doing them from the perspective of theater because that's not what I'm teaching my community. But because I have experience with Broadway and theater, I will share my, my opinion. Bra uh, t theater is a little different, right? Um, Theater, if you know, if your role was um, a nurse, you wouldn't necessarily show up in. You wouldn't certainly slow down. The hamsters are going. You wouldn't use th these exact same tactics. Like you know, you're not able to see the show. Like you can 
allude to something. So if you're a professional, of course, some slacks, uh, a blouse. For my ladies, usually a skirt and a blouse. Um, it depends if it's a musical or not, you know. Usually for theater, you're showing up as close to the character as possible. But if it were a nurse for a theater, I wouldn't, I more than likely wouldn't dress in scrubs. You kind of, with theater, I almost feel like you try to be as blank of a slate as possible. Like on the contrary, whereas TV, film, we're trying to just show, come up and say, I'm, I'm the nurse. See, I have on the scrubs. I'm a nurse, see? Versus theater, and this is just what I've always felt like, you want to be the blank slate. You want to show that, hey, you, I can do this, but because you may also be looking at me for another role. So I, I never, there's never, there was never a time where I dressed the part like that. Only thing that, you know, again, if the if the role in your theater play is, you know, if your role is she's, if your role is sassy or very sexy, certainly wear something that's form, wear something that's form fitting and that shows up your shape. If you're supposed to be somebody's, you know, grandma, or grandpa, make sure the clothes that you have on relate to that. You still give it a vibe for the age range or for the type of character it is, but you don't go as, as uh, obvious <laughs> as we do for film and TV. So it's just, it's different for me in that respect. So I hope that you found this helpful. I will see you guys here back tomorrow. Make sure that you don't be stingy. Share this with at least one actor. Please comment or hit like if you did enjoy this. It just helps me. It helps the algorithms so that more people can see these videos. I'm Christine Horn. Again, if you want to catch up, catch all the replays, you can come to my YouTube channel, Coach Christine Horn. And again, if you're looking to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, check out the links above or below for the inner circle and apply now before spaces fill up. Have a great day. Bye.